hello there, good evening and welcome to the Planet Cruise TV show. Do you know, whenever I hear that theme tune, I always get a little flutter in my heart. This show's been running now, oh, I think it's about 13, nearly 14 years. Um, we're here every month at the moment, but I will let you know straight away, we have got another show in two weeks' time, so put that in your diary right now. If you are brand new to the show, well... Where do we begin? Uh, this is a dedicated cruise show. We have got some amazing exclusive deals. We've got cruises for, for this year, for next year. We've got some small cruises and big cruises and some amazing prices. And if you've never been on a cruise, you have got to do it. So, so I only did my first cruise when I was 40 and I've now been on about 35 cruises. They are amazing. And there is a cruise for everybody. I still have friends that say, oh, I'd never do a cruise, but there is a cruise for everybody. We are joined by the king of cruises, our wonderful Glenn Wallace is with us. <laughs> Happy New Year, Glenn Fisher of the Year. Thank you very much. Yeah, we weren't here December, so uh, we're kicking off January. We've got two shows two this shows. month. Two shows, It's January, so January is always the busiest time of the year for all holidays. I mean, every advert you turn on at the moment is holiday adverts and everything at the moment. So, and I we think, all want to get on a holiday, oh, don't we? I think we? more than ever. I think yeah. for two years now, everyone's looking at it. And I think, as I said, you turn on TV now, um, every every advert is just sitting around a beach or being on a cruise ship or travelling the world. Haven't and I think, missed it? And I think everyone's so fed up now. I think people are just like, let's get on it. So, And, 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 and we should say, Glenn, that... Um, Obviously, you've been you know extra busy because travel restrictions have got obviously uh, lessened. Yeah, Lowered. Boris it's made a couple of announcements this week. I don't think he's done everything right this week. But Josh. <laughs> the rest of it's been not too bad. Um, <laughs> but he made a couple of announcements that making it easier. I mean, it's, yeah. it's just an ever-changing um, circumstances, and we have to sort of live with that at the moment. But this is January, so um, end of December, start of January, and all through Jan is what's called wave. So for the cruise industry, that's when all the cruise lines put in their promotions. So cruise lines are um, increasing their onboard spend. Um, some of them are reducing their drinks packages. Others are doing free flights. Um, I, so had a, I had a, a, pack of, I had a, a package of yesterday where the guest book and it was 98 pound return from Miami. So flights like that. So I would say that this is the busiest time of year. I think there'd be the best prices. If you're going to book anything, you want to be yeah. booking it this month. And I've, I've presented way. the show for years and the prices that we've kind of got are great. And I think, yeah, I'm booking cruises right now. Um, and there's still a lot of flexibility as well, isn't there? Yeah, Glenn? cruise lines have still a lot. All of them have got their flexible policy, which they have to have in place at the moment. I mean, if people want to go away in the next couple of months, there's some really, really good deals. Um, other people are sort of leaving it to the summer. Some people are moving to 2023. But again, as I said at the moment, I think people have had enough. They're fed up sitting on their couches. They just want to get out and yeah. about and, and see the world. And, and live and, life again. Exactly. We've just uh, been chatting about it now. Now, you've noticed, different phone number. You'll be ringing Planet Cruise directly. So it's 0808 250 What time are we open until tonight? I think Glenn? the guys are there till 10 o'clock. Back in tomorrow at 9 o'clock. I'm back in the office. Back in the office for the it's first time. actually day. in the proper office. Proper well. office not, not tomorrow for the home. first time in 18 months. Um, fed up sitting at my breakfast bar at home. <laughs> <laughs> feeding the fish and playing with the dog. So um, I'll be in the office tomorrow from 9 o'clock. But the guys are there till 10 o'clock tonight. Brilliant. Well, shall we begin? Because we, we've yes. got some amazing cruises, got five cruises, and got some hot picks. But we are going to start with P and O uh, on board their latest and most beautiful ship, Iona, as well. And again, look at that price on the screen: seven nights, and we're looking at a price starting at five hundred and nineteen pounds. Brilliant for a new ship. I mean, Isn't it? Iona, Iona. I felt sorry for Iona because I'd never known a ship under wraps for so long. Because obviously, it was supposed to launch just as the as the pandemic hit, and then I think it eventually launched. July 2021, so it's ready to go. It's the biggest ship to sail out of the UK. It's there. Uh, it's designed mainly for the Norwegian fields because it does all summer there. It does one week cruise and you've got the infinity pool at the back. You've just seen the dome there, which is great for Norway. So if the weather conditions a little bit cooler outside, of course you've got that, but you can see the Vista Cafe there. Yeah. This is what it's designed for because you can imagine going through the fields a lot of the time you're just looking at the views as you're sailing. So this is what the ship's mainly been designed for for the summer. And having cruised around the fjords a couple of times myself, yes, you want to see everything, don't yeah, you? Yeah, but they've also, they've increased, because the size of the ship's so much bigger now, the 710 Club is their musical festival club that they have there. Obviously, Gary Barlow's got a tie-in with that as well. They've got 27 bars and restaurants on there to keep you occupied. Everything is what's called freedom dining on there, so you can go and dine when you want. They've got away with first and second dining. You can go when you want. But again, the, the, the cabins they have on there, so you go inside, outside, balcony. You've got the infinity balconies as well, which I know other ships are doing as well, which are great because they're almost like a conservatory. So again, for the fields, if you're going in April, May, the weather's maybe not so good in the evening, you can still sit out on that balcony, but have the windows down and still get the great views. It's selling really, really well. And again, what's so good about this, because it's every seven days, prices are more or less the same per month, 
but you could just work it out. So we can't do the 6th of June, so we'll do the 13th of June or the 20th of June. It's going every single week to more or less the same distance. And we have got um, we've got prices for for this year, 2022, yeah. and for next year as well. So you can plan ahead, and obviously just a, a, a small deposit needed. But let's show you the itinerary. I mean, I you know I so I, I love the fjords. Um, first of all, we're cruising out of Southampton. I cannot explain how easy that is. Yeah, well. it is. It's really really easy. And again, with this one, depending on when you go, you can take as much luggage as you want. Obviously, we've got the hotel if you want to stay the night before. We can do parking for you if you need us to. But it's so much easier going out of Southampton. And again, all the itineraries, they all slightly differ uh, depending on the week you're going on. But this one's going to go out of Southampton. And normally with the Fjords cruise, you have a day at sea, which you'd need on board Iona uh, just to sort of bed yourself in and get around the 27 bars and restaurants and see the acrobats. Yeah, we'd be trying to do that in a day, wouldn't yeah, we? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. What a, good, what a good sea day that would be. Yeah, it would. So we're going to start off at Stavanger. So Stavanger's famous for the pulpit rock that you can see there. That's the famous. I think that was used in the last Mission Impossible film that they had there. But if you've never done a Fjords cruise before, the ports are called a great, but a lot of them are small hamlets. Stavanger is a little bit bigger, as you can see there. But the, the highlights of a Fjord cruise is the cruising. Yeah, absolutely. Sitting on that back deck, taking in a few drinks as you sail in and out the fields on there, I which mean, is the, great. The views are spectacular. They are. They're they really absolutely are. beautiful. I'm, I'm sure in Stavanger, is that where the, and this sounds really boring, but is that where the Canning uh, Museum is? I've never been there, mate, no. What, what's it called? Right, just, just, just it, it, it sounds really boring, but it's where sardines, it's all about sardines and canning and you, stuff. You've definitely been at home too much in this lockdown. No, no, this you sounds really boring, to, but you... it was actually really good. Anyway, listen. Okay, there's loads more stuff to do in Stavanger we... than go to a sardine museum. No, but I know, they have but it was actually really good. I thought it was going to be really boring. I'm sure it was that. <laughs> right. Uh, we, yeah. we, we're searching right now. It is, I knew it was. There yeah. you go. Okay, so moving on from there, <laughs> if, you, if you haven't bought it already, the cruise for the sardine factory, we can then move on to Alden. Now, Alden's a little bit like a cul-de-sac so as you sail into old and i suggest you get up nice and early in the morning because the sailing is absolutely stunning at the end of the day you'll turn around and go back out the other way olden is about as big as my lounge um, there's about four buildings there <laughs> so you can have a stroll off if you want to but there are a few things to do here which i would recommend the rib ride which is great the inflatable boats you could do one of those trips if you wanted to they've got canoeing through the glacier which is stunning i would definitely recommend a trip out to Lovon, uh, lake which is beautiful and you've also got the brixdale glacier so the brixdale glacier yeah. you can't get to from walking you have to do the tour and if but you don't want to, I, I did that yeah and if you don't want to walk they've got the troll cars they're like yes. longer golf carts that would take you as far as they can and then you get right up to the glacier which is beautiful. Um, but again, there's not much actually in old in itself, so you want to try and do a tour there. I always what, recommend though, to do a tour in the, there. The air is so clean, everything is so peaceful and unspotted. It is beautiful. Uh, where's next then, Glenn? Then from there, we move on to Allison. Uh, Allison, together, another popular destination where uh, we do the fields. Uh, and with this one here, you've got a, a number of different things to go on there. You've got the Atlantic. I'm, I'm just, gonna, just before we go to Allison, do you actually, we've got, I think, a few images of the actual. Um, cruising through the fjords. Yeah. Because this is what you'll experience. And it is, you know, the the views, the constant changing scenery like this. And that's, that's, that's what I'm saying to you. It's constantly moving scenery. So what's so nice about Norway, uh, the only thing I would say is Norway, it's not the cheapest place when you're eating and drinking out and about. So what you tend to find is a lot of the guests go off for the day, they do the tour, they come back, they have their drinks on board the ship, yeah. which is obviously a lot more reasonable British cruise, you know, British prices. Like it, look at that. But just sitting there with a glass of wine or a Prosecco, having a cup of tea, whatever you want to do, just sailing along these fields, that is, like I said, the highlight. And as I said, that's just some of the, the images from uh, one of the cruises that they've had. Um, as I said, we then go on, on to Alisund. Uh, Alisund, again, I probably would recommend doing a tour there. Um, you've got a couple of different things to see, but again, as I said, you can see how small the town is. I know. You can have a wander around, but really you want to try and get out on the tours. You've got the um, Atlantic Sea Park, which is quite interesting to go and see. You've also got the Sunmore Museum, which is a popular destination. All these are Hanseatic wooden style buildings, which is synonymous in a lot of the uh, cities that you go into in Norway. Um, and then again, what's also funny if you're walking about, have you seen the Norway Gurn? No. Never seen that. Okay, so what's great is watching guests go out into bars and restaurants and then getting their bill after they've had lunch <laughs> with a couple of beers and then watching their faces <laughs> and trying to work out the exchange rate and saying, we haven't just paid that for that, have we? <laughs> yes, you have. Welcome yeah. to Norway. So, so that's what I'm saying. A lot of people go off in Norway, have a look around, then come back to the ship. Have a big breakfast on the ship, go out and then come back and have your nice yeah. lunch or afternoon. Exactly. Too. But it is lovely walking around, Alison. Yeah. It's a, as I said, you've got all the... Um, the uh, buildings there they have. And then into Helsund, again, they've, they've gone into this as opposed to Bergen as an alternative, um, because obviously the size of the ship. But again, 
beautiful sailing in there as well. You're going to be there all day. Again, you can have a wander off. You can go on some of the country walks. I mean, when I was on board, the ships used to go for a run every day. And like you're saying before, the air is so clear. But again, some of the tours they do in all the destinations take you out to these dessert areas, like going out to the countryside in the UK, but it's slightly different in Norway. And again, they'll have small little museums, they'll have stave churches, um, and they really do focus on the culture that they have there. Norway's completely different to a lot of places you've ever been to before, so I would recommend doing one of these. And then a day at sea as well, just to chill out after your four port days, and then from there, back into the UK. Wow. Now, honestly, um, I, I want everyone to do a cruise. Uh, you know, it's, it's an amazing experience. And as we said, there, there is a cruise for everybody. And um, with this one, I've just explained this. It says book select fat and choose from free spend or port parking. What is select fare? Yeah, so the prices we've based it on is what's called a saver fare. So allocate the cabin numbers. You don't get anything with that. Obviously, any onboard spend. If you want to pick a cabin number, which especially on the balcony, as I always recommend yes. an Iona, um, you pay a little bit more, but normally the onboard spend or the parking or the coach transfers compensate for you paying that little bit more. So most people on Iona book the select fares. And again, when you book the outside cabin or above on a select fare, you'll also get a little bit of extra onboard spend. Like I was saying, January wave campaign, they're giving you a little bit more. Nice low deposits. You've got no tips yeah, on this one. Yeah, people worry about tipping, but you don't have to. Nothing on P&O. I mean, you obviously, know. you can give your cabin steward a couple of quid at the end of the cruise, but you can just walk off there. And again, if you unfortunately have had any cruises cancelled, you've got any what's called future cruise credit, this can be put towards those ones. But again, all the way through summer 22, 23, every seven days this cruise comes out, and so it will fit in with your schedule. And all of your food, and the food is amazing on cruise ships, it's all included. So that's breakfast, lunch, yep. evening meal, you know, snacks throughout the day, afternoon tea, whatever. Uh, these are the prices. I've been um, cruising around the th fjords in April, um, but I've also been in July. Quite a different experience. July, it's pretty much uh, 24 hours of daylight. You've got midnight it? sun, which yeah. is great. But again, if you go in April, all the snow and ice is melting. So you get all the waterfalls. So all the you? waterfalls are a lot stronger. So it depends when you want to go. Obviously, a little bit colder in April. Um, lovely time of year to go, July and August. Yeah. And as I said, second to none. But you, you've got all those different dates to choose from. Um, and do think about maybe upgrading to an outside or a balcony to get, you know, all those lovely views and to have your own private space as well. Um, what a great start to the show. Excited about that one, actually. Uh, but um, I was very lucky. I did go on a um, couple of cruises last year, and one of them was a princess cruise. Yes. And it was one. Of, it was one of their um, four. It was a four night mini cruise. Didn't actually go anywhere. Well, it, it sailed. Well, yeah, but it didn't. didn't it was amazing because the yeah. ship was so beautiful. Um, mm. And one thing that I was really impressed with was the medallion, and we're going to explain that right now. So just have a look at this to give you a little bit of a taster. Um, first of all, princess. Uh, I mean. An amazing cruise line, really quite luxurious, I would say. Yep, yeah, we class it as five star on there, yeah. but they've brought out the new medallion yes. on now, there for you now. This so. was so good. You basically, you have it with you, um, and then if you use uh, your phone or your tablet, anything you want, like food, <laughs> drinks, you literally can order it on your phone, and because you've got the medallion, I think it works like via Bluetooth, the waitress knows exactly where you are. Yeah, or, or, exactly. You know, and, um, and again, with, with everything Princess have introduced in the last 18 months, you can now check in online on your phone, oh, you can link so your easy. bookings, you can start uploading your passport. But the medallion now is really, really good. And as I said, they can find you anywhere on the ship. And basically, it's all this where they're not trying to get contact, obviously, with everything going on at the moment. So you order your but, drinks and it can deliver to you in the jacuzzi. Yeah, while you're yeah honestly, there. it was so good. But anything you needed, you, you know, it was there, basically. Um, so I never once had to queue at a bar, which is amazing. <laughs> You've done a, few, done a bit of queuing in your time, haven't you? I have. <laughs> what, what I have to say, though, with, with Princess, again, we did the staycation cruises last year, and every cru most cruise lines were doing out of Southampton, you know, to get the ships back in the water. Um, always get feedback. A lot of people came back, and we wanted feedback from them, what it was like on board, you know, with all the new, you know, things that are going on. And I have to say, Princess was the most positive yeah. we got out of all of them. And the amount of people that came back and either rebooked another staycation cruise because they just wanted to get away again, they enjoyed it so much, or they've booked for this year or 23. Well, I, I've got my eye on this one, and I, I truly have. I mean, look at that price for start, 468. I mean, the ships are amazing. The service was yep. incredible. It, it was one of the best cruises I'd ever, ever, you know, had the pleasure of going on. Great entertainment. Well, that's one of the things I love about cruise ship plan. I mean, you know, there are, there'll be theatre shows, there'll be yep. pianists, yep. singers, live Yeah, music. and again, 17th of September is a nice time of year. No, no, no disrespect. If you've got the kids, obviously, you go in the summer holidays. 
the kids are back at school, 17th in September, if you're going on with your partner um, or a friend. I mean, they they are geared for all age groups on there, but the, 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 the rooms are stunning. As I said, it's five star. You've got, um, and again, with this one, you can upgrade. So they have also what's called the Princess Plus. It's 30 to 35 pounds a day. And then you can pay for that, and that will give you all your drinks, all your tips, and all your Wi-Fi as well. Yeah. And that's, that's right. brilliant value. By the time you've had two or three drinks, you've You're done your money, back. and you know your tips are paid for and everything. So yeah. really, the only thing you're spending is what you do when you get off the ports or any speciality dining that you want to go to. And again, I know some of you may be new to cruising. Just give us a call, you know. Give us yep. a call this evening. We're open until 10 o'clock or first thing tomorrow morning as well. Yep. Uh, now, again, this is an nice easy one. Uh, cruising out of Southampton. And it was seamless because I'd done everything on my phone before I cruised. Literally, it took about... Five, ten minutes, yeah. I would say, to get yeah, on board. Yeah, it's, it's so easy now. And again, staff are there. If you're not au fait on, you know, your, your mobile phones and people struggle with tech and stuff like that, the staff are there to help you. We're here to help you as well and, and do that for you. But it does make it seamless now, which is really, really uh, good. Now I can see Wing Guernsey now. Aren't yeah, I? lovely. Again, uh, some of these destinations you go to, I would have thought the Channel Islands are so popular, but it's never easy to get there. So it's great to go there on the cruise ships. I've done St Peter Port many, many times. You tend to, to sail in on the tender boats because the ships are too big to go in and that's St Peter Port there just in front you can wander off there's loads of bars and restaurants the markets are there as well they're geared up for the ships coming in but again if you want to go further afield there's some great tours what what I normally recommend people doing St Peter Port is maybe go off in the morning maybe do a tour you've got the Shell Church you can go to because obviously in, in the war, this was one of the only places in the UK that was occupied by the Germans. Yes, it was, yeah. So again, you've got quite a lot of military history. You've got the military hospital, the underground hospitals, um, the turrets and things like that. So it's quite interesting with, with military information. And then what I tend to do is do a tour in the morning and then just spend the afternoon wandering around the town. Now, I've not been there for a few years, but when I was there, you could, you could get the bus anywhere on the island. It was a pound. Oh, it's brilliant. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. It's got some stunning beaches there as oh, well. Oh, beautiful. It's great. As I said, if you haven't been to the Channel Islands before, this is, you know, you've got Jersey and Guernsey. We're going into St. Peter Paul. But it's there where you dock the towns right in front of yeah. you at the top. At the end of the promenade, do a left and you're straight into the it, town area. It, it was wonderful. really was. And then you've got a day at sea. So, you know, the days at sea can be wonderful. There's so much always happening on the ship. So many beautiful things to try and experience. But we are making our way to La Rochelle, aren't we? Yeah, La Rochelle. Um, and again, the sailing's lovely here. You've got the turrets. You've got the old Gothic-style buildings that you have in La Rochelle. You've got the Maritime Museum. You've also got, um, again, as I said, just wandering around the back streets. People, a lot of people don't do a tour here. They just wander off for the day. They have a little bit of French hospitality in the bars and restaurants. But again, as you're sailing and you're going past the beaches there as well, which is stunning. So again, that's a nice sail out. So again, at the end of the day, just don't go back to your room and get changed. Maybe sit on that top deck. They'll probably have some music playing. It'd be nice to have a glass of wine and just uh, have a nice sail out of La Rochelle. I get the feeling you're not doing dry January, Glenn. I got to the third. He <laughs> <laughs> just mentioned drinks a lot this show. Uh, anyway, we're going from La Rochelle. <laughs> Let me go to <laughs> Bilbao. So we're heading down into uh, northern Spain. And again, another nice popular destination. You've got the Guggenheim Museum, which is a popular destination to go and see. But again, oh, here we go again. You've got some great wine tours <laughs> that they do there. They do food and wine tours as well, which is really good. They also do the historic tours of the town. And you can also go off to San Sebastian if you wanted to. But again, different sort of architecture they have in Bilbao. But again, nice to wander around the back streets there. And again, go for a coffee. Um, <laughs> well and then from there down to La Coruna, another popular destination when we do sort of our um, Northern Europe cruises here. And again, into Spain. Now from here, you can get to a number of places. You can go to Santiago de Compostela, which is the UNESCO World Heritage Site. Again, the gentleman that uh, founded Zara, Pull and Bear, that's where he's from. So they've got some good shops in the shopping centre there. You've got Rezar Beach, if you wanted to pop down there as well. Um, and again, beautiful architecture. So some of these places you're going to, as I said, if you maybe upgrade to the Princess Plus on there, you've got your drinks, your tips, your Wi-Fi, you've paid for the cruise. Most of the ports you go off, you can just wander off and get lost for the day. And it just makes it a really affordable week away on a very high class cruise line. Great service, great food, stunning ship. Um, I say my mate was cruise director on there over the summer um, and they say he was posting pictures all the time. Really, really good atmosphere on there. You will not be disappointed. Uh, you will have had a final debt seat, by the way, and then disembarking yeah. in Southampton. So you've got amazing reduction. And these prices, and it's I've presented this show for, for many, many years, they are incredible. It's like rolling back the prices to 2012. Seriously, yeah. 468 yeah. for seven nights. That's all of your food. Um, you will get an exclusive 5% reduction. That is included in the price. So we're actually showing you that right now. You can upgrade to Princess Plus. This I would definitely, if you like a drink, 
definitely do that. It's about 30 to 35 pounds a night, but you'll also get uh, your premium drinks. And uh, I'm right in saying that covers your tips as well. Yeah, tips yeah. as well on that one for you as well. Again, it's no fly from Southampton. And if you look at the deposit, again, everyone's, of course, a bit not nervous, but with everything going on at the moment, they don't want to be paying out loads of money. It's from £50 per person deposit, so the deposits right. are really, really low. And then you have lots in that price. You know, yeah. I, I, you know, we don't know, but we can imagine as things begin to get easier and easier to travel, prices are going to really rocket, I would They think. are, yeah. Again, as I said, you know, they're, 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 they're getting higher and higher, especially going into 22 and 23 yeah. at the moment. People are going to start travelling again. Uh, now, price-wise, we've got um, inside balcony suite and also the family of four price as well. Do you know, I'm looking at the 17th of September. Yeah. That is amazing, even for the suite, yeah. 943. Really, really good. Really, really good on really there. But good. again, nice time of year to go. So you've got the summer, 23rd of July this year. And then if you think, oh, I don't know what to do this year, or I've already got booked up, you've got the 6th of May and 16th of September for 23. And it is just nice to have something to look forward to, isn't and it? And again, it's got like Sky Princess going out of Southampton all this year and next year. So again, other destination, yeah. Baltics and Med. Um, and again, all of those will have the Princess Plus with it as well. So, uh, you may well see me on board that ship. If somebody's on there and they look like me and they sound like me, it's, <laughs> it's me. Probably okay? you, yeah. It probably is me. Uh, and they've got a drink in their hand. It will be me. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's time for one of our hot picks right now. Right, what have we got for our first hot pick then, Glenn? So I think we've got a Royal Caribbean uh, on there for you, which they're going to put up on the screen. There we go. It's a Western Med from Barcelona. Again, these are selling well at the moment because, as I said, they've got some really, really good deals. Remember I talked about the, the Wave uh, campaign at the moment? They've got massively reduced flight costs on there as well. So this one's got reduced low deposits, which they brought in a couple of weeks ago, which is great. Um, you can also go, go all inclusive. Remember I talked about the drinks packages? Normally with Royal Caribbean, it could be 50, 55 pound a day. At the moment, if you get this booked and then add on your drinks package, 40 pounds per person per day, which people that have traveled with Royal before will know that's a good price. You can fly at the moment from Gatwick or Manchester, plus your transfers are included. Um, and basically, if you add on the drinks package, you're looking about 999 for an all-inclusive holiday on Royal Caribbean. Nice time of year to go. A little bit quieter because it's out of the main season. And as I said, a good itinerary on that as well. On oh. But... I, I, Glenn and I, we've, we've, we've cruised, say, uh, you know, many, many ships. And uh, Glenn used to work on the cruise ships, of course, as well. We forget about that. Yeah, I do, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> it was. <laughs> That's when we needed um, oars. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we haven't been on any of the brand new version cruises yet, have no, we? No, I know. A lot of people have been on them, though. I was out with my mate yesterday, and he, he was on there in the summer. Um, absolutely loved it. And then I turned on TV the other night. And I watched a programme with Mr Sugar on it. Oh, yes, I was watching that as well. And it was filmed on there it, with, it with shit, 16 it? of the biggest wallies I've ever met on there, <laughs> trying to name a cruise ship and trying to name a brand and that. And I was getting more and more. If my, wife, it was my wife, Helen, was, was going, you should be doing this. I was like, no, it's driving me mad. <laughs> Bougie cruises or whatever they call it. But, um, so I they, loved it. It was so yeah, funny. On The Apprentice last week, they featured um, Scarlet Lady, which is obviously the first ship that... Mr. Branson's brought out. And this time we're featuring Valiant Lady, which is going to be the second of his cruise ships coming out. I think it's sister ship. It's more or less the same. Um, and it looks stunning. Well, um, if you've ever... I mean, I, I love flying with Virgin. I've mm. done, um, I've, you know, many, many flights of Virgin. And I think anything Virgin do is not... Well, it's always really good. But they're cruise ships. They are something else. Let's have a little look. Set sail the Virgin Way, and they have really, you know, they've they've mixed up cruising with this, haven't yeah, they? Really yeah, yeah. I think things. I think he's bringing out four ships all together over the next sort of couple of years, and he and he's trying to move it away from the standard cruising. I mean, it's going out of a dodgy place. I certainly wouldn't go near Portsmouth. <laughs> that's where Glen lives. By <laughs> yeah, the way. that's where I live. So let's have a look. What's at lovely Valley about Lake. this is we we saw Scarlet Lady going out every every couple of days in the summer, and it looks beautiful. As I said, the ship is different. It's based more on a 
a, a sort of beach club feel, so that's almost like the splash pool. Um, they haven't got any main dining on there. They've got, um, I think, 20 speciality restaurants, but you can dine at any of those. Yeah, they're all included, they're aren't all they? They're all included on there for you as well. Um, again, something to, to cater for all types on there. Um, the, the, the shows, they still have shows on there, but they also have bands and sort of festival yes. type groups. I say my friend that was on there, he took his band on and, and, and they're uh, more gigging and things like that. So it is done a little bit different. And speaking to a lot of, the, a lot of my clients that went on over the summer, loved it. They loved it. They said it was very, very different. And again, I think if you're a traditional cruiser, you have to go with that mindset that it is going to be slightly different. But they have tried to do things differently, which is good. Because as I said, I think if they just brought out another ship, everyone's going to be the same. And of course, yeah, I know, tattoo, I know yeah. most of you will be coming back with tattoos. Yeah. Um, but it will be a really good tattoo. It won't be a dodgy one. I just hope it's not rough weather. <laughs> 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 but again, it's all different things on there. They've even got lots, some of the rooms have got like stereo players in the room. Um, some of them don't have beds. They convert into sofa beds to give you more room. They've got the boxing ring on there as well to keep fit. Um, and again, various cabins, they've tried all different ones. So they've got the sea terrace rather than a balcony. So they've well, just tried to do things a bit different. Uh, because we're all short of time on this show, we better uh, show you the destinations as well. Um, so we're, we're cruising out of uh, Glen's hometown, Portsmouth. Yeah, we're at Sea, then it's La Caruna again. I'll give you a wave off. And then from there, we're at Sea down to La Caruna. We've just discussed that anyway. Um, and that's going to be your first port of call. From there, we've got another day at sea, and then we're going to one of my favourite destinations into Funchal, Madeira. Again, this is beautiful if you've never been there before. We used to do a lot of it when we used to head over to the Caribbean and back again, um, but they're obviously on the um, Canary Cruises, they go to um, Funchal quite a lot. Botanical Gardens, you've got the oh, cable stunning. car, you've got the toboggan. As I said, you've got the tropics meets Europe. Um, and it's just one of my favourite yeah. destinations. Same here. I, mean, I, 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 love, I don't know anyone that doesn't like Madeira. I love, I love gardening. I love flowers and the, you know, the, the gardens are spectacular. Um, but uh, bear in mind, you know, with the lead date of April, you're going to get some great weather because we're yep. heading over to the Canaries, aren't yep. we? Yeah. So we go on to the most popular island, probably Tenerife, and um, we dock in the north of the island in Santa Cruz. So again, uh, you can stay up there. You can go to the Lido of Porta de la Cruz. You can go down to the south to Playa de las Americas. You've got Laurel Park. You've got Mount Tady. You've got plenty of things to do. They're obviously a massive, massive destination for the Brits. But the good thing is, being in the Canaries, you know the weather's going to be good, even in April, which is nice. Pretty much all year round, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Then we're going to Las Palmas, one of my uh, places I used to live in Gran Canaria. And again, you've got Puerto Rico, you've got Bailing Glares, you can go over to Mas Palomas, which is the sand dunes. Um, again, a lot of people tend to stay in Las Palomas because you've got nice architecture there. You've got the tropical plants, you've got the nice uh, volcanic beaches that they have there as well. But as I said, you know the weather's going to be nice. Um, day at sea, and then we're going to Lisbon. So this is nice because you've got an overnight on board. So again, sailing into Lisbon is spectacular. Under the 8th or the 25th bridge, past the Christ the Redeemer statue. You've got the Belem Tower as you go past as well. And then in the town, you've got the glass elevator that you can go on. You've got the yellow trams that you just saw. There's the Belem Tower that you'll make your way past as you sail in. And what's nice, as I said, you can stay out overnight. You can go for a drink in town. You can go for dinner. Um, or as I said, obviously make your way back to the ship. It's always nice having. It's a great overnight. place. I mean, I've, I've been there yeah. a couple of times on a cruise, and it's wonderful. It's lovely, really it's a beautiful lovely. place. Yeah. And then a day at sea, and then from there back to home, and you can come and see us back in Portsmouth. And is it so nice on you know, without pointing out the obvious, but you get to see so many places yeah. on a, on a cruise on a single holiday. Yeah. Uh, now this is the maiden season, we should say, on Valiant Lady, uh, sailing from Portsmouth. All meals, uh, Wi-Fi, gratuity, soda, stylish accommodation, that is all included, and immersive entertainment. There's going to be some amazing entertainment. Now, a choice of over 20 restaurants. There is no extra charge. And I guess you can eat as much as you like. Yep. Restaurants. Yeah, you can go into those restaurants and try them all different, so you never have to dine in the same restaurant twice. Uh, now, for every $300 uh, that you prepay uh, on your bar tab, uh, you will get an extra $100. We'd, we'd end up with thousands of dollars. Oh, hours, God, we? we'd have so much free. <laughs> uh, free port parking with Planet Cruise today as well. And uh, as, as we mentioned, it, uh, this ship, if you were following The Apprentice, uh, was featured on the BBC's <laughs> Apprentice. But I think they called it Bougie Cruises, didn't they? Bougie Cruises. I can't oh, remember the other teams, oh, can God, you? Oh, no, it was so bad. I remember the logo. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> pricing-wise, um, we, we've got uh, two dates for you there. We've got the 4th of April and the 18th of April, and you can see all different prices. Uh, it would be nice to, uh, to have one of the suites, actually, wouldn't it? It would be nice, yeah. yeah. As I said, if you're going to book this, let us know, because I'll give you a wave as you go past my house. Yeah. Uh, but I, I have, you know, I've stayed in all sorts of cabins and cruise ships, you know. Um, I've been lucky enough to have the old sweep. I've also had inside cabins, ocean view, balcony. And you know what? I think it just depends on your budget and also 
how much you feel you need things like a balcony. Yeah, know? exactly. Some people don't. They want to no. spend the money while they're, they're there and do whatever. Yeah. Get your tattoos. Uh, uh, absolutely. Anyway, it's time now for our second hot pick. Uh, now, I was very lucky uh, to cruise with Oceana before the pandemic. And I have to say, oh my word, what a spectacular experience. I mean, we are talking premium luxury. Uh, this is a Western Europe uh, alert, Southampton round trip. Uh, 10 nights on board Riviera. She is the most stunning, beautiful ship. Now, in the deal today, and this is for deluxe window suite, you will get free Wi-Fi, choice of free house select beverage package, or up to $800 spend per stateroom, or up to eight excursions per stateroom. You don't have to choose that now, just give us a call. Complimentary port parking and at just a 10% low deposit. And when we talk about Oceania, I mean, they are known for their incredible best, best, food. Well, I think it's the best food at sea, yes. personally. Yep. Um, and the other big thing with this one, we did this a couple of years ago, It go, most of them are fly crews. This one goes out of Southampton, yeah. and that really, really and, appeals to people. And they only normally do one or two of those. They don't year, do many. I say we featured no. this two or three years remember, ago, and it, and it well, literally flew, but it didn't yeah. because you didn't have to. But anything <laughs> out of Southampton is really, really popular with yeah. Oceania. They are amazing, seriously. Um, absolute luxury, um, incredible restaurants and food, and uh, just really high end. But yeah, they're very rare for them to cruise out of Southampton. I would book that one tonight. It will be yeah, really popular. Really busy. Uh, right, Glenn. Oh, I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> so nice to have Planet Cruise back, isn't it? Uh, I know Simon and Sylvie would be watching. They, it's, it's a real regular. They message me. We're like, when's Planet Cruise on? We're here tonight and we're back in two weeks. Two weeks, we? I think 25th, yeah. Yeah, two weeks' time. And we want you back every week. You do know that, Glenn, yes. don't you? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Start a campaign at home, please. <laughs> email in. Sign a petition. Uh, in fact, there was I... a petition to get us back on. We're up to nine signatures at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> right, our email is studio <laughs> at idaworld.tv. Start that petition. We want Planet Cruise back every week. Final cruise, though, tonight is with Norwegian Cruise Lines yeah. on board the Jade. I think this is a cracking deal. I love it. And, I, and I, what Dave I love about this one. as well, I love the itinerary as well. Same so here. the ship's great. The packages that we're offering with it as well, but the ships are great. So if you haven't done NCL before, um, again, as I said, there are different cruises for everyone. NCL is very, very popular. Um, they, with the packages they include now, with the drinks package, and everything is great. Um, with the dining package they have, but it's really for people. They they have freestyle dining, no dress up nights, no formal no. nights, smart casual every evening. Um, very focused on the entertainment, and then also the speciality restaurants they have there. Um, Again, I wouldn't say it's a young person's cruise, but it's geared to all ages, and I think people like that. Um, I was dealing with a gentleman yesterday who wanted to dress up in the taxi. That's what he liked. Directed him to the ships he should be going on. This one for people that want to every night just go out a pair of jeans and a shirt, yeah. or you know, smart, you know, a little, little bit more of a dress down evening. They are so so popular. I've been on a couple of these. I've been on the Jade myself. I think I, have. I think it's had some sort of refit. Don't quote me on that, but I think it has. Um, but again, once people go on NCL, they tend to go back. The entertainment is phenomenal. Really, really I, good. I've cruised them a few times, had a great time. Yeah, really, I don't know really anyone good. that's come back off there and no. not enjoyed it. Really don't. Um, but the price that you're looking at, 789, yeah. uh, is incredible. And the lead date, the 1st of May. And when you see the itinerary, it, you're right, Glenn, there's some beautiful yeah, That's places. what I'm saying. There's some really, really good deals at the moment. So this one's going to fly you over to Athens. We're going to fly you over there. And I think with this one, we've got flights available from Gatwick, Heathrow and Manchester on there. Um, again, I, I, I'd have to check on those for you. I think the Gatwick and Heathrow would definitely be direct flights. Not sure so much about the Manchester, but again, we've got the flights included. You've got your transfers on there. And then from Athens, we're going down to Kusadasi. Now, one of my favourite destinations, Kusadasi, when I worked on the ships, we were there every other week. Great place to dock. Um, so what we normally do with that one is in the morning, most clients go off to the archaeological site of um, Ephesus because um, it's a little bit cooler um, first thing in the morning. And then when you come back during the day, it is, there's Ephesus there. Yeah. Absolutely amazing place to go and see. And on the way back, you've that. then got the Kusadasi itself. Loads of shops, market stalls. That's where you do all your, your bartering and haggling. That's where you get all your genuine fake goods, if you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> you can buy DVDs of films that aren't even made yet. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful. And as I said, do Ephesus in the morning and then do... <laughs> I'd love to see you barter. I bet you're brilliant, Glenn. Oh, God, uh, I got Superman 9 the other day. It was brilliant. Um, <laughs> and then from there, we head down to the island of Patmos in Greece. As I said, this is a wonderful, wonderful itinerary. Um, and again, some great places to go see. So you've got nice beaches. You've got Petra Beach. Um, you've also, as I said, because it's one of the smaller 
uh, Greek Isles there as well. It's beautiful. Again, if you if you if you've got an image of some of the Greek Isles out there, this is this is beautiful. It's not as popular as of course as some of the other destinations. So a lot of the tavernas are a little bit more traditional. You've got the fishing boats there, and I think it's what you envisage of a small Greek yeah. island yeah. on there. To be quite honest. Then a day at sea just to chill out, and then we go over to Israel, which many of you haven't been to before, and we're going to Ashdod and Haifa. So Ashdod, you've got a couple of things to do. This is between Gaza and Tel Aviv, so this is where Ashdod is situated. And again, you can do a number of things here. You can spend the time in Ashdod, but I would recommend, as I said, if you get the chance to maybe go off to Jerusalem, you can go and do a Dead Sea. Um, you can go to Tel Aviv as well. There are a number of different excursions to do there. I would have thought most people haven't been there before, so it's a great opportunity to get over there and see them. Um, and as I said, some really, really good excursions on that particular port of call. Then we, then we head along the coastline to Haifa. Um, and this one, you've got the Bahia Gardens, you've got the Museum of Art there. The Bahia Gardens look absolutely stunning. And again, I'd recommend a property tour here because again, you might only go there once. So you yeah, want to see cool. as much as you possibly can. And if you've got the afternoon, then you can go and do what you want. But I say these two ports of call, most people won't have been to. And I'd really, really take advantage of the excursions that they have there. We then go over to Cyprus, into Limassol, again, another place I used to live. Um, and again, Limassol is sort of in between Paphos and Ayanapa, um, and that's where the, the ships come into. Again, Limassol's great to wander around. I would personally say, if it was me, I'd probably take one of the tours to Paphos or over to Ayanapa, Proteras, wherever you want to go on there. But Cyprus is great. You can go up to Famagusta, you can go up into the Trudos Mountains. Lots to do there in Cyprus. Um, and as I said, I lived there for a year myself, and it's a great island to go and visit. We then go into arguably, I think, the best port of call I in totally agree. Europe, yeah, totally maybe agree. the world, I don't know, is Santorini. So Santorini, you can't dock there, you have to tender in. Um, and then again from there, you go across to Santorini, you either go up on the cable car or on the donkeys, make sure you just go on the cable car, it's much safer. And then you've got Fira, which is directly in front of you, or Oya, which is the one you've just seen there, which is the Blue Dome buildings. That's looking down onto the ships. That's where there's bars and restaurants for you to sit down and relax. Santorini is stunning. It's beautiful. As I said, there are the ships there looking down on that. But you won't have a better port of call anywhere in the world than the caldera of Santorini. And then from there, back into Athens. Great itinerary, great cruise. Oh. Now, um, let's show you what's included. Um, and this is really important. Obviously, your flights, your transfers are included. But... This is brilliant. If you upgrade to free at sea, and that's only £99 per person, you will get all of these extra amazing benefits. You'll get an open bar. So that's all free drinks. Up to $15 per drink. If you book it daily, it's £108 a day, or $108 wow. a day. For £99, you're getting an open bar up to $15 a drink. And you can have as many as you like. As many as you want. Um, uh, specialty yep. dining as well, so you get to go to all the really nice restaurants. Yep. Wi-Fi, and you will also receive a short excursion credit package. $50, $50 per port. Wow. I mean, look, that is amazing. So, you know, add on that £99 to the prices on the screen, and you've got absolutely everything yep. included, haven't really, you? Really, everyone takes that. Yeah, it's got to be done. Of course. Uh, and we've got great... So we've only got one date there, the 1st of May, but you've got inside, outside, balcony, the mini suite, and the suite as well. I, I, I think that one is incredible. Really, we, we, the ports of call... I mean, everything sells it on that, the £99, the ports of call, the ship, everything. Again, I, you... you, you you may see me on that one as well. I'm trying to, I, you know, it's been two years of not cruising, really, hasn't it? So anyway, let's recap what we've seen so far. We started with P&O, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, P&O, I said multiple dates on this one. They do seven-day fields cruising. We've based this one, I think, on the 15th of April as the lead date. But again, through summer 22, 23, book the select, select fare and get your um, free spend parking transfers. Outside cabin, get extra onboard spend. No tips, and you can use your future cruise credit on that one. Uh, and then... We went on board Princess Cruises, on board the absolutely stunning Sky Princess. Look at our price on the screen. This is for the 17th of September. Great time to get away. 468 is your lead price there. Got amazing reductions. You only need £50 deposit tonight as well. Uh, we have included that extra 5% reduction in the price on the screen. And remember, if you want to upgrade to Princess Plus, you will receive premium drinks. That's about 30 to 35 pounds a night on average. And that will give you unlimited Wi-Fi and crew incentives as well. And if you don't like flying, you can't fly, don't want to fly, no flying on that one, just straight out of Southampton. Uh, then you can come and see us down in Portsmouth oh, yes. um, on the brand new ship Valiant Lady going from my hometown. Um, all meals, Wi-Fi, grats, sodas, stylish accommodation and immersive entertainment included. You've got up to 20 restaurants there at no extra charge. 
pay $300, uh, $300 bar tab and they'll give you an extra $100. We're paying for the parking for you as well and just check out the ep episode on The Apprentice. Uh, yeah. As I said, the lead date on that is the 18th of April 2022. Yeah. And then we, uh, we saw just a few months ago this incredible itinerary on board NCL's Jade. It's a seven night Greek Isles and uh, Israel uh, cruise from Athens and you're going to get obviously your flights, your transfers, and please don't miss out on this. If you upgrade to free at sea, that is only £99 per person, you will receive an open bar, specialty dining, Wi-Fi, and a short excursion credit package as well. And we have got flights from uh, Gatwick, Heathrow, and Manchester. We also had a couple of hot takes. Yeah, so we had that Royal Caribbean on Vision of the Seas. I think that was going out on the 27th of October. Reduced low deposits on that one. You go all inclusive for £40 a day. That won't last too long, so get that booked. You can fly from Gatwick or Manchester, plus overseas transfers are included. And basically an all-inclusive holiday for 999. I think the ID on that one is 273488. And then we had that premium luxury cruise with Oceania. They hardly ever cruise out to Southampton. Last time we had this a few years ago, it was a top seller. I think it will be selling really quickly tonight. But deluxe window suite. Uh, 10 nights out of Southampton there, 2329. Um, ID number on that one, 289891. Now remember, you can call until 10 o'clock this evening. And first thing tomorrow, do you say? I think 9 o'clock, I'll be back at the office at 9 o'clock Yeah, so if well. you hear a voice, well, if somebody answers the phone and says it's Glenn, are there any other Glens working at Planet Crew? There's one, but he, uh, just ask for the good looking one. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Glenn, it's been amazing. Yeah, always a pleasure to be You're back. You're back on the 25th. 25th but it, but guys, it's Wave. Get booking now because we've got yeah. all these fantastic promotions. Well, I'll see you in two weeks' time, Cheers, Glenn. Mate. But get booking right now. Some amazing Cheers, guys. Right, take care. If you'd like to be in the know with the latest and greatest cruise deals, then be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to receive notifications every time we post a video.